Greetings, welcome to Tribal Jazzman Scholar. I'm going to talk about a really fascinating field called eco-psychology. Um, it's really looking at what is it about the human mind, the human brain, the human psychology that is continuing to support a relationship towards nature which is largely destructive. And eco-psychology is looking at at what is it in human beings that might lead us to behave in the ways that we do. And they have many, many models, and most of what I'm going to describe comes from Ralph Metzner in an article entitled, um, specifically, The Psychopathology of the Human Nature Relationship. And um, so some of the models that have been put forward, um, one of them is, is that human beings, without going through appropriate initiatory rituals in adolescence, we have this extended adolescence that pushes us right into adulthood, and we end up with a lot of very immature adults, so that we kind of have a uninitiated society that operates with many of the behavioral tendencies found predominantly in adolescence. There's a kind of um, uh, boisterous, arrogant, consumerist model that, that directs a lot of our culture and a lot of our society, and that that adolescent model is very incompatible with kind of the empathetic uh, steward mentality that we would hope could lead to a more sustainable approach to the environment. So the first model is this idea of, a, of, of, of immaturity of adolescence extending into the adult world. And there's lots of examples of that. I mean, we see politicians name-calling. I mean, some of the sort of uh, role model, quote-unquote, role models in society exhibit really inf infantile behavior and regressive tendencies. So that model is, is one of the models that can help to explain or that's being used to explain psych psychologically what's going on in our world where we are so um, willing to disregard all the signs that, that, that our environment is falling to pieces and we need to act immediately. Um, another one is the autism model. The idea of an autistic is they can't hear, sense, or feel their mother's presence. And if the earth is our mother, we're acting in many ways like, like an, uh, an autistic child. So the autism metaphor or the autism model is another one. You know, engaging in stereotype movements, a restricted range of interests, obsessive routines, lack of awareness of others' feelings. These are all, you know, the uh, diagnostic manuals, definitions of autism. And, and when compared to traditional societies, people in tribal groups, tribal-based cultures, we we people in the present world, we Westerners even, to be more specific, demonstrate those types of behaviors, those sort of more autistic behaviors, to a greater degree than we see in traditional societies and members of traditional societies. So the autism model is another model. A third model is the addiction model. In the addiction model, an addict has information that their behavior is destructive to themselves and to their families and to their work and to their social relationships, and they continue to do the behavior despite that. And that certainly, that model would apply to the way we interact with nature. Um, we know now for 30, 40 years that our behaviors are causing an, some irreversible damage to our biosphere, and yet we continue to act as, uh, in spite of what we know. So that um, addiction model is yet another one that can be used to try to explain this pathological relationship we seem to have to nature. Um, another one is, is the idea of collective amnesia. It's as though we know how we should be with nature, how to have a reciprocal, sustainable relationship. We've known it for hundreds of thousands of years, and yet we've forgotten it. So in, in, in this model tends to say once we entered agriculture 10,000 years ago and became disconnected from ancient ways of being in relationship to wild nature that we developed a kind of collective amnesia that's sort of in our bones. In fact, they call it the... The psycho, uh, eco psychologist likes to talk about a, uh, um, the ecological unconscious. It's the part of us that knows we're the stewards of the earth, that we must caretake Mother Nature, and yet we don't do it. It's an unconscious sense of stewardship, so it hasn't come into conscious into the conscious mind. And so the collective amnesia model is yet another one of these models. Um, there's also a dissociative model. Dissociative disorder is when um, we almost live with a split life. We have um, actions on the one hand and behaviors that belie those actions on the other. Um, where where we, we see what we're doing but we don't have an emotional response to it. 
and dissociative disorder is, is often seen as like a splitting. There's been some psychological studies of the Nazi doctors who would go listen to beautiful classical music and play with their children in the garden in the evenings, and, and then during the day they're, they're, they're treating other human beings in, in ways that are, belie understanding. So this sort of splitting is a, is a form of dissociative dis disorder, and that is another model that's been used to try to explain this human pathological relationship to nature. Um, there's another important part to the dissociation that needs to be described, and that's that for a long time in our Western model, we have seen nature and spirit as two contrasted and incompatible aspects of the world in which we live. Spirit is the ascendancy to something higher and grander, even in a heaven beyond this world. Spiritual practices often involve asceticism, where there's denial of the body, denial of the sensual, corporeal, physical, nature-based, instinctual things in, in our lives. Nature seen as lower, more base. Um, in fact, earth being sensual and and God and sky being ascendant, spirit being something above. And this disconnect between nature and spirit, which is is very much the, the key to a lot of our religious traditions in the world today, our large monotheistic religious traditions, um, that's uh, very contrary to the way that traditional peoples, tribal peoples, view the world. They see nature as the dwelling place of the sacred. So their relationship to that is one of great respect and sense of responsibility to and a deep felt caretaker and steward orientation with regard to nature. Um, and as we as we separate nature and spirit, we tend to then objectify not just our lower base animal behaviors as something even sinful, we can then see nature as something that needs to be conquered and overcome in order to progress as a species. As a So, eco-psychology then is this field which really tries to understand how the human relationship to nature can be described using psychological analogies and psychological frames and metaphors. So with, tri with that, Tribal Jazzman Scholar will sign off. Thanks for joining me.